Hello viewers and welcome to the intro before the intro for Geordie Space Programme. What's going on here, Gonzo? It's very, very hard to try and summarise this, but in short, what's happened is um, Kerbal Space Programme, um, I'm sure most of the people that are playing it are aware of this, has just came out with um, version 24. And version 24, also known as First Contract, has introduced a completely new way of playing the game which involves a reputation system, involves money, and also the science that we all know and love. As a result, the previous episodes that we've recorded in preparation for our series are now kind of obsolete. Do you want to explain why that is, Ewok? Well, absolutely. I mean, we've recorded three episodes of what we were calling Geordie Space Program, The Next Generation, in which we did all sorts of funky stuff and got off to a pretty good start. But we can't really continue with that now because the new contracts and the new financial budgeting system have kind of ruined our save in the extent that we've got high level contracts based on where we are on the science tree but we don't have any budget to buy a ship yeah effectively those contracts. we're going to have to try and go into planetary using 10 grand which obviously i'm sure some people can we can't so what we're doing is a little bit of a kind of added bonus while we're getting ready with the new contract system and the new series we're going to put these up as a little kind of mini series to tide you guys over i know people are clamoring for more jolly space program and so this this is Geordie Space Program, the aborted episode, season yeah. two point five. This will tide you over until we actually get some time to sit down and record with the new update. The nearly next generation, if you will. So we will see you with the proper next generation soon. But here is a video from the aborted mini series. Enjoy. Hello, viewers. Do you see what's on the screen? Can you see what's on the screen there? That means one thing. It means we're straight back in for a new series, an improved series of Joy Space, Space Program. Program. God, it's been a long time since we've been able to do that, and it feels good to be back in here. It is. It, it's fantastic. And this isn't just any Joy Space Program. This is Joy Space Program, the next generation. You a want a brand me, new space program. You wanted me to jump on the back of that one as well, but I wasn't going to do it. Oh, we so, talk to that every time. It's too much of a mouthful. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Then. Right. Explain the situation as it stands. What are we doing here? Um, we are starting a new game. We've done two series of Geordie Space Program previously where we didn't know what we were doing. Yeah. Uh, we now sort of know some of what we're doing. Apparently. apparently you, you say this. You, apparently you've been practicing. I have been practicing. So we're going to start a brand new career game of Kerbal Space Program. Let's just point out um, the nifty new flag. It's only taken about 15 episodes to work that out in two series. I believe it's been far more than 15 episodes maybe. But uh, the flag is there. Hang on. I'll just quickly nip into the hangar. And uh, if you... Sort of rotate the camera around. You need to pop something down there yeah, quickly. There we go. And then I just uh, rotate the camera around. Oh, there it is. There, there we there. go. There it is over there. How good does that look, man? <laughs> <laughs> right. Love it. Oh, there, e, e. Uh, okay. What we're going to do with this series? I mean, this is episode one, so naturally we've got absolutely nothing in terms of uh, equipment unlocked. We're going to have to unlock some equipment. So I'm going to do some cheap signs horn. Yeah. Uh, while we're doing that, I guess we'll come up with some objectives. Yep, certainly. I think that sounds good. I mean, we have talked about doing this off camera, and then that never happens. We never get around to it. So yeah, we've always said, "What are we going to do? What are we going to do?" Um, what I will point out as the first episode, and the fact that we're going to be just really pimping to get as much science as we can as quickly as possible. It's probably not going to be the most exciting episode. But we'll try and keep the banter way, good. Way to build up the yeah, series. Yeah, no, we'll, we'll try and keep the banter good. But if you if you are new to Kerbal, then you could get some useful hints out of this Aye. on how to get yourself started uh, in in career mode. And this is going to be the the first thing I do is create this. In fact, I don't I don't even need some fuel on it. Create this capsule. This is a really cheap way to get science. Yeah. Launch it. It's not even launch. There's nothing to launch here. It's just sit it out there and, well, uh, and do some science. Yeah. Put it on the launch pad. Zoom in, take a crew report, 1.5 science. Um, while you're doing that, Ewok, I should just explain if people are fairly new to um, Geordie Space Program and, and the way that we play it, we should explain that there is some ground rules here. You'll notice that we don't use any mods, we're using complete sort of stock parts within the game itself, um, and we don't put any mods on. Even mods that might be quite nice, I know. Um, a lot of um, a lot of Let's Players like to use things like the beautification mods, better atmospheres and what have you. We like to keep things 100% plain Jane Vanilla. Um, other things, we like to play hardcore, we play Iron Man mode. So if anything goes wrong, we lose Kerbals, we'll live with that. We'll live with one mistakes. We don't quick save stuff, we don't revert. 
Um, we play exactly as things are going, and yeah. let the chips fall where they're Somebody made. dies, if it crashes, that's it, it's done. Yeah, check the previous two series for things that can happen. And even though Ewok is full of bluster here and saying he's better, I'm sure we're still going to see some I'm stuff sure going people on. Die. Here's a little hint. Uh, this is quite useful. Uh, there's three different biomes in the actual Kerbal Space Centre. That means there's three areas where you can collect science mm -hmm. and you'll get different results each time. There's the runway, the landing pad, and then the rest of it. And now a lot of people sort of try and boost over from the landing pad to the yep. runway when you first that's start because that that's not that's what I've done before. Yeah, maybe yeah, the rocket. Just click on it. Across. Click the W key to spin yourself around, and there you go. Now you were talking last time we were playing about trying to do a, a lander and building it here, and then converting it into uh, something on. Yeah, 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 so you can lift yeah. It up. Well, the files over. You could do that by building it this way. Never even thought of that. It's quite clever. Uh, so I'm launching again. Uh, if you take take a science reading somewhere where you've already done it, you get a much reduced reading, if anything at all. So by doing it this way, I get myself a little bit of extra science. So you can see here report. that we've got Geordie science going on, which involves just dragging out yep. little contraptions onto the runway, looking at them, and then dragging them back in again. Yep. Reporting in the runway, good thing there's not a lot of air traffic, because I don't think we you ever got clearance from the tower to be here. Keep like like we would need clearance anyway. I mean, what are we going to do? We've just basically built a tiny little roadblock. This is a most precarious situation. EVA report while flying. Uh, I see, it's because he's not on the ground. That's... Uh, Something of a def definition of flying. Aye. Uh, so let's take a surface sample. And there we go, nine data, that's a little bit better. Back into the ship. There we go. You know, we, we, we hummed and hard about whether we we're going to record this in 720 and leave it as it is, or record it in 1080 and uh, uh -huh. downscale it for, for hosting the video. I think next time we'll uh, we'll record in 720 because I think some of this writing might be a little bit small. And some yeah, I'm struggling to read it a little bit myself. To be fair, we're playing on a big screen TV, which does not lend itself well to uh, uh, the tiny writing. To the tiny writing. I'm currently going to go on the runway again. Uh, sorry, the launch pad again, because thinking about what happened just there, I think that would have been a data report flying as opposed to to landed. Do what you got to do. So I'll do that. EVA report from launch pad, 2.8 time. You know, oh, I've been forgetting to take surface samples as well, haven't I? You got one from the um, the runway before there. And I but I didn't get an EVA report from there, you see. I'm making mistakes already. It's been a while. It has been a while. Uh, I I did say I've been practicing it, that I got better. It's been a few weeks. Aye. And uh, we go up to 29 science. Let's see what we're going to afford from the research and development centre. We can get. Basic rocketry for five signs. It's handy, it gives with the coupler, it gives with the goo pods, gives with, it gives with the goo fuel. pods. And the goo pods is our first step into getting more signs, really. Uh, we've got another 24 here, so we're going to have general rocketry, stability, or survivability. I think survivability is probably a key one, uh, because that's going to unlock more science options down the bottom. Yeah. And science is the way we want to go. So we're going to need another 45 signs before we can unlock the signs junior, which is going to be our next thing. So Aye. again, I'm just going to spam it a little more and be a little cheap. Uh, all I'm going to do is add, goo, uh, add two goo canisters to the side of the ship. Yeah. And then we can use the goo canisters to get a bit more science. Yeah, I mean, some of the feedback that we got in my previous series and when we were kind of doing a bit of a post-mortem on it, we realised that we were kind of a little bit haphazard when it came to exploring some of the different biomes and as a result we were missing out on a lot of stuff. And then we ended up getting up to a certain part of the tech tree where really we didn't have quite enough um, capability to get that little step further that we needed to unlock some of the really high-tech high, uh, high tech advanced stuff. Um, and, and it's we skipped ahead, hadn't we? Because Aye. we were so keen to get to the moon, that, or moon rather, that we just went straight there as soon as we could, didn't do any exploration on Kerbin. Once we'd been to moon, which itself has loads of different biomes, so loads of different opportunities to do science, we sort of went there once, and then never went back again. Aye, and I think Why from... Why can't I uh, go down? Never mind. That's, is, are you asking in life in general, or for the purposes of the video? <laughs> Uh, there we go, there we go. Cool, get that bad boy on. Ah, who cares how they're on, there we go. 
So yeah, so the plan is... Oh, I accidentally exited there. Of course, um, well, that was unfortunate. No, no, I well, didn't. Uh, Super. Now, the, the point that I was going to raise there is that we'll probably spend a bit more time exploring more um, parts of the moon and exploring more places as and when we get them. Probably spend a bit of time exploring um, Kerbin as well. The previous two series, we never built anything like a space plane. Um, you know, I think a space plane's probably much further down the line that'll take some doing, but in terms of like building an atmospheric craft yeah, we to could. explore some of the local biomes, that should be quite good fun. I, I can kind of design an alright plane. Um, nothing fancy, can be a little bit wonky, but I can get a, a serviceable uh, a serviceable aircraft. I yeah, I've, I've got the plane and, yeah. and I've taken it to the poles again. It's nothing super fancy, but it did the job, it got me there. 23 sides there. Right, I'm going to have to strap a little rocket onto the bottom of it now and take it somewhere nice. else. Nice, here we go. We're about, well, we must be coming on about 10 minutes into the video. We're finally going to actually, We're finally actually launch gonna, something. We're finally going to launch something. It's not going to be uh, you're just the, the most the, um, exciting launch you'll ever see. You're using a little um, poodle one, are you? Oh, we're not going very far. We just need to take it off the launch pad and into, right. into Kerbal Space Program's uh, joke. Do you want to try that sentence again? Into... Into the Kerbal Space Center's main grounds. I've never heard you struggle for words as much as you did just there. That's because sad. I keep wanting to call the Geordie Space Program and Kerbal Space Program, and I'm not sure which one to go. We haven't named any of these vessels. I don't think they're worthy of a name. Nah. Check out that big banner there, though. Isn't that cool? Aye, that's a Channel one. artwork right there. Right. Where shall I aim for? Um, about 15 feet to your left, I suppose. 15 feet to my left. I think 15 feet's probably not going to cut it. Oh, hang on. Almost made that mistake. We made that mistake in the first video where we set the parachute and the rocket off at the same time. Yeah. To be honest, I had kind of noticed and I wasn't going to say anything. Now, that was a hell of a way of doing it, Jesus. It was. Uh... <laughs> but he's alive, he's fine. You know, he could, have just, he could have just walked. Yeah, but then I wouldn't have been able to get the, the crew report and the goo. I would have only been able to get the EVA report. Could have just rolled it. I mean, it was on a hill. That would have been fine. Take a surface sample. We will take an EVA report. So, I mean, that's pretty much as much as we can get initially. We could get a little bit more, but it's diminishing returns after that. Well, that gets us 41. What did we need to unlock the Science Junior? We need 45 for that. We need 45. Oh, that means we're going to have to go a little bit further afield. Should we do an ocean one? Yeah, why not? Let's just go and uh, get some hen's toes wet. That'll probably be alright to get there, you know. Oh yeah, I'm sure it will. Um, I'll just make sure I don't turn quite as hard as I did before. Nice. I'm staging. Good man. Keeping me right. Hey, we're pros now. That's it. We've learned. See, there we go. That's a little bit more controlled. <laughs> Of course, if I land here, we'd probably get grass. You know, I was hoping in the um, the, the the first episode of our, um, of our new series would go with a slightly bigger bang than to just sending a tiny little rocket down to the beach. No, we're being sensible now. We're running the Geordie Space Program as it should be ran, not in a suicidal attempt to try and kill all the Kerbals in the galaxy. Now, you we've, say this. We, we've done that. We've the, done that. That's old to, hat. There's got to be a middle ground. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> You've got to take risks. I mean, you can't get the space without breaking kerbals. And this they, well they will die, but there's no point killing them at this early stage. They may as well go down in glory. I'm loving the fact that we're, we're kind of fresh-faced to this again, because if you remember where we got to in the previous two series, we were just that sick of failing that we're just we're punishing people by ejecting them out of the capsules. Yeah, and um, we did the, uh, the, the awesome off, final episode yeah. as well, where... Oh, it's tipped over. That's fine. We'd have to recover separate. Get some water, so, so go take on. A surface sample, get the EVA report. Uh, recover our vessel, because James out the vessel, it will only recover him. So that's him. And then we'll recover the spacecraft. Cool. Now that means we've now got enough for the science junior, which means we can do all of this again. Good, go for it. Go for it. But I mean, what we are doing here uh, is useful to new players certainly because it's teaching you how to get your first steps on the science tree 
um, and you really do need to get those first few steps before you can actually achieve anything. Yeah, you need the cutlers, you need to get some good science equipment so when you are looking at going somewhere you can do something when you're there effectively. So we're going to whack the science junior on there now. I'll maybe stick a bigger engine on that, you know. I will do soon, uh, once we've got the science uh, science readings we need. I just want to see a few more flames. That's all I'm thinking, we need a few more flames. 7.5 science there. I mean, when I take it off, I'll stick a bigger engine on. Just for you, Gonzo. Chat Just Thank for you. you. Thank you. It is appreciated. Now I've already got the goo, so I'm not going to bother. Oh, why is it being like You'll that? have to tilt your camera a little bit. Sometimes, you know, that does catch people out as well, especially if you're fairly new or fairly inexperienced. I'm not trying to proclaim that we're experts in what we're doing here, but sometimes, actually, I would probably say the majority of the time, if you're having issues trying to connect parts, Move the camera. Play with the camera and try it again, and you'll find that eventually you will get some amount of likes. I like the some of the messages you get here because obviously people try this a lot. So when we look at the material study, it says one of the samples appears to be judging you silently. Yeah, yeah, they know people are going to do this. So, to be uh, fair, I'm judging you silently as well. I'm with a science junior on this one. Well, I know you, it's going to be done. I you know refused it's to be do done, this the first time, and I think it hurt us the fact that we didn't do it. The thing is, at some point, we would have to come and back and do this if we needed some cheap signs. So, it does make sense that we just do it and get it out of the way. Absolutely. And then we can concentrate on the bigger picture. Just try and land on the roof. You reckon you can do it? I've done it before. Go for it. That would be good. Oh, okay. oh, I've lost control. I've lost control. Cut the engine out. Put it around nicely. The world's first black uh, backflip. Nice. Bloody hell. Oh yeah, I'm good, I'm that's, good. That's I'm not good. bad. I think you're a bit too fast now though. If you just like bounce off the side, lose your parachute and then fall, that'll be tragic. Um I'm going far too fast. Uh, I was trying to adjust it there, but unfortunately I wasn't paying attention to which way the ship was facing, so when I tried to turn it. How the hell are they meant to get that down now? You just lit it. It's like having like a, a football on your garage roof. 7.5 signs there. Might as well get a little bit more signs because I blew one of them up. You might have to see if you can turn it. See if I can flip it around. I'd like Again, to get, get, get that rocking gun. Get the capsule of rocking. You can do it. Go on. Go on. Put your back into it. Nah, I don't think this thing's coming over. It'll do it. Look, it's, it's so close. <laughs> I'd like to get them out because I'd like to put a flag on the roof. This is the most pathetic space launch I've ever seen in my entire life. I mean, props to you for getting on the roof, but then just to leave something just wiggling like a worm you've just cut in half stuck on the roof. I guess we'll have to recover that. I do want to drop a flag down at the space centre um, so we can try and land at the space centre yeah. in future launches. That'd be good. It'll be particularly handy when we're doing like um, suborbital flight, but yeah, especially trying to come home, the closer we can get the better. I mean, really, it's just... There's no real purpose for it other than to try and be sort of smug and pretentious. Oh, it's good, and I mean, longer term, the thing is, now that we're relaunching the series, bigger, better, brighter, I mean, we will be looking at things like SSTOs, we will be looking at... What's an SSTO? Single state to, or single stage to orbit. So we'll build a space plane. Will we? I've yeah. never done anything like that before. Well, that, we are going to do that. Okay, uh, it's easy for you to say, in the back seat. Hi. <laughs> but yeah, sure, um, why not, we'll do that. I put a bigger end to do for you, to do way. that. We uh, I see that now. I appreciate it. I don't know. Will the legs be long enough to uh, to do it? I have no idea. So where about are you going to go? And just I'm just going to just going to nip well about the grass then because we haven't done anything there. Cool. And then we might get something to start thinking about doing a flight. Maybe trying to um, go suborbital. Oh, there we go. That's uh, that's all the fuel gone. Oh. Put the legs out. Put the legs out. Put the legs out. Yeah, that's. Slightly too, slightly too short those legs. If anything, it, it, it probably just means it'll rest on a couple of them when it comes down. That'll be fine. We're not going to even reach the grassland. Ah, right. best pop the parachute. Close enough. Be alright. Oh, it's, it's going to be sort of on the threshold. That I don't believe. I believe this counts as planes. I don't think it counts as uh, yeah that, verbal space once you're this far out. Yeah, I think it's just a change in the the textures more than anything. I don't think it represents a change in biome. And parachute out. Have you noticed you can now speed up and you're alright when the parachute uh, comes out. They seem to have fixed that bug where 
yeah. when you sped the game up, the parachute would. It's worth pointing out actually that this is the first time that we've um, we've re- hey that worked a treat. Well, not, not, not quite a treat. But do the uh, wiggly worm. Do the wiggly worm. Well, it didn't work last time. What makes you think it's going to work this time? We've got the addition of legs. That might help. Um, I don't think it's going to work. Oh, but I, I need to do, don't I? Because I need to get out to take the report. Yeah. Go on. Again. Yep. There we go. Oh, oh, oh. That, that might do it. Oh. I might get him out. You'll probably not get him back in again. That's fine. I've got to do the science on these things before I let him out. So where are we? We are in Kerbin's Shores. Water has rusted one of the samples and some of the electrons are uh, expletive deleted. Yep. Goo accumulates near the water facing side of the container. So this is the shores and then you get to the, the grasslands or the plains once you get Aye. further on from there. Crew report. Bangaroo. Yeah. Well, one thing that we should point out as well is that obviously we're still kind of open-ended about the stuff that we would like to do. Um, we've got comments there um, underneath hey. our YouTube videos, and you're more than welcome to visit those and um, and leave some ideas. Um, Whoa! Did what you say that? The hell's going on there? Get out of the way! Bit of a little physics glitch there. Um, but yeah, what I was saying there is, you know, obviously if anybody has any ideas of anything that they would like to see, we attempt. Bearing in mind that we're starting again from. Uh, from early doors here, so we're limited in the um, the, the technology that we have. But by all means, as far ahead in the future as you want, something you'd like to see. Aye, that's it. We're still looking, I suppose, at longer term goals and what actually we would like to achieve. You know, in the last two series we looked at. I um, think our highlight was landing on Eve, but we never got back. So we never did a, a, yeah, a, a interplanetary there and back mission. Yeah. Um, and you know, I think in, in interplanetary, I think kind of like mid to late game is going to come into it. Shorter term, we're going to be focusing, I think, a lot on. And the moon and Eve and the different biomes there, getting stuff there and getting stuff back. Um, maybe even looking at putting like a little base there or something like that as well, or some rovers. The stuff that we didn't really touch on last time. I suppose we built a base and sent it to Eve, but it just sat there really. Uh, now, how far down the line is it we get decouplers? Um, I think we've already we got them. Did we get them at the second stage? Yes, we I did. Got some basics. So. I mean, the aerodynamics aren't that useful to us, but the radial decoupler is. Aye. Uh, yeah, I'll get that. Uh, 29 science left, it's not quite enough for anything, is it? We need 45. But there we go, just from messing around on the launch pad and on the area immediately next to the Kerbin Space Centre, we've got all this. Yeah, and I think the thing is to point out as well, you know that it's not the most riveting thing, but it's it's the sensible thing to do, and of it's, course... It's where you start. We still want to make sure that this is fun, but we do actually want to try and be a little bit better, because it was getting seriously depressing um, towards <laughs> the end of uh, the last series. Yeah, it was. So we are trying to... Uh, I'm not saying trying to take a serious approach, but we're certainly trying to make things a little bit better. Not that we weren't trying to do as good as we could last time, but... We want to actually go out there and see a bit of the universe, you know, get out there, see other planets, do interesting stuff on those planets, rather than just put something into orbit and then it goes horribly wrong. That is still undoubtedly going to happen. I mean, it's, it's you know, that's kind of integral to playing Kerbal Space Program, really. But we're certainly going to be aiming to actually try and do good stuff, and hopefully we'll have more good stuff than failures. But it depends what you like. I'm, I'm sure you'll still see a good few failures in here as well. I'm sure there are people who would like to see the failures. Um, I'm building a rocket that I'm going to try and take into space. So um, let's see how we get on with that. Bear in mind, we have got decouplers now, we've got radials and we've got um, stacks. Um, there's no use for decouplers on these liquid ones because we've got no oh, cross fuel, fuel yeah. feeds. Yeah, of course. Um, I just want to go straight up because we're not planning on doing any sort of manoeuvres. This is gonna probably not going to achieve an orbit. Um, We'll be lucky if we get into space and back again. Uh, however, I will stick some decouplers on so we can get a couple of these nice. solid fuel bust boosters on. And it's one of those things that really, once you get better in the game, people generally stop using solid fuel boosters. Yeah, um, once you get the fuel cross feeds, I prefer to use the liquid yeah, all liquids. Yeah, all liquids is the way to do it. Oops, there I go. With but the these are really good, cheap and inexpensive way of doing it. The thing I was actually I was going to point out before... This is the first time that we've been playing on um, the latest patch, which is 23.5. Because when we started Jordy's Space Program, it was before that patch came out. So with some of the fixes and some of the bits and pieces going on, 
Um, it's the first time that we've done it. Um, it's worth mentioning. Which one's twenty? What's the twenty-three point five? Um, bits of the stability going on. Um, there's, there's quite a few bits and pieces that I've brought in, but one of the big ones that um, I think that we'll notice is that a lot of the, the kind of the physics glitches and some of the instability issues should be gone. Yeah, um, as far as we say, we're not going to uh, restart failed missions and things like that. What I might do in some of our other flights is quick save. Um, um, not so we can revert if we crash or anything like that, just I've noticed that if you do encounter some of the physics glitches, if you do a quick save then, mm. and then quickly reload it, you get rid of those problems, and some of the problems you encounter on the nav map as well. Yeah, we'll so, have a lot of those going on yeah, towards the end so of the We'll be using it as a way to get around any sort of glitches or bugs that occur, because Kerbal Space Program <laughs> is still in early access. Yeah. Uh, but we won't be using it to, to cheat. Uh, the, the first rocket, what would you like to call our inaugural rocket? Hmm, it's a very good question. We should always think about these things in advance, shouldn't we? We should indeed. We should indeed. Mm. There's a, there's a. No, we've used the woolly hat before in one of our own, uh, one of our other. The uh, woolly hat seems to be sitting on a penguin, though. That's that's a wizard. It's a wizard. It, he's wearing a blue robe. He's holding a wand. From here, he looks like a penguin. Call it the magic penguin. The magic, the the magic penguin. Yeah. Oh, nice. dog. The magic penguin. Magic penguin. And of the, course, penguins are black and white. And this and is Jordy's face program. Let's let's save it for prestige. Okay, first thing we need to do is check the stages. Solid fuel boosters first, then they get ejected, then all the liquid fuel boosters are going, uh, then I've got the separation section there, so it'll split the lander off. Um, I'd best put a little bit of fuel in that, just in case, eh? Alright. Um, one thing that I'm thinking is Actually, obviously. No, I won't. it'll be fine. You can give descriptions to crafts, so I might start thinking, just if I'm kind of backseating here, I might start thinking of majestic descriptions that you'll then have to uh, dictate into the, uh, into the descriptions when you're there. Let me just do that for the hell of it. Um, one parachute's got to be enough for that. Ah, it should heavy. be fine. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could stick a couple on the side of the Science Junior, but I don't think it particularly needs them. Fine. Let's All launch right. this. Uh, so my aim here is to get into space. Um, I'm not going to try and achieve an orbit, but I'm hoping that there's enough poke attached to this craft that we'll be able to get into space and take some science reasons and come back down. Cool. And I'm not really fussy about where we land either. We'll send Jeb, so let's hope that we don't get him lost and just send him off. Oh, I've got a little bit of twist happening here. Um, we could have done with some sort of stability. Uh, that would be alright. But I don't think we have any of the any of the tools to bodge the bits of the rockets together at the moment. No. Anyway. Sometimes that can happen if things are either out of symmetry or sometimes you find if you've just got a lot of thrust when you kick off, sometimes it can just put like a bit of a kink in the air. Well, it's because the thrusters are pulling the uh, pulling the various bits of the rocket out over, aren't they? Uh, you can see there's a, a bit of an unhealthy uh, sort of wobble and a bit of an unhealthy lean. Oh, it's something we'll be able to address later on if we had uh, the support and struts to stick things together uh, for lack of a better Get ready, word. first a couple of the uh, series coming up. First a couple Get of the ready. series coming up. Don't die. <sighs> nice. Rockets. Nice. I'm going to start my gravity lean. Alright, take it over. Oh I am, it's just uh, not very responsive because I've got the... I, I focused on engines that had uh, better thrust rather than manoeuvrability since we're not going to be doing any, any real serious manoeuvres. Aye. So really what we're doing is relying on the torque like you get from the capsule for our control here, which isn't great. Well, we've got plenty of fuel, I don't think we're going to have any problem achieving uh, suborbital flight. Well, we're, we're doing suborbital flight now, really. It's orbital flight is what we're trying to do. No, no, suborbital is getting into space but not achieving an orbit and then coming back down. Right. Orbital flight is achieving an orbit and then coming back down. Oh, I thought suborbital just meant flying through the atmosphere. Atmospheric flight, my friend. That's what that is. <sighs> Again, our first look at the actual navigation map. This is where you'll spend most of your time in space. This is where we spend most of our time swearing at lines. Uh, so I'm going to need to achieve around about sort of seventy-five thousand meters. Doing it easy, mate. Yeah, plenty of fuel left. Nice. So we just have to patiently wait for uh, Jeb to get into space and. There we go, that'll be a suborbital flight, we'll get lots of nice uh, nice signs for doing it. Pro might even have enough there to achieve an orbit, but let's not push it. Aye. Uh, especially in a craft that's got no manoeuvrability, we don't want to get Jeb stuck in space again. Yep, again, see series 1 and 2 for that. See, uh, see series 1, episode 1. 
<laughs> appropriately titled Lost in Space. That'd be, of course, series one of the original series, yeah. TOS. This is uh, series one of uh, the next generation, TNG. Those well, are trademark of Gonzo Ewok, incidentally, TNG and TOS. And, uh, I think yeah, I've never heard of anything yeah, else called that. We're frankly. the first ones to ever use them. Uh, I'm going to take a sip of coffee, so you, you have to keep the, the conversation flowing. So I'm now. not allowed my coffee just because you're drinking yours. I was reaching for my cup as you said that. Yeah, I saw you going for it, which is why I, but I you, left in. You succeeded. Uh, 64,000 feet, 65. It doesn't look Magic number 69 coming up, which incidentally is the uh, height of the atmosphere, if you didn't know. Is it? Once you get to 69 and a half. Blam! There we go. And there goes the music. We are now in suborbital flight. So let's get some sciencey, sciencey, wines done. In space near Kerbin, 25 science for that. Cool. You jam that. What I'm liking is I'm, I'm actually quite liking the uh, the no nonsense approach we're having. I think we've came out with a strong start here. I'm enjoying this. Straight into the point, direct, getting sh done. That's the way to do it. Don't let go. He's thinking Getting about it. Air report, air science for that. From space just above Kerbin's water. Get back in quickly. I mean, that's the beauty of uh, some of the suborbital flights. Is I'm, I'm not sure you get on the orbital flight. I think you just get in space in orbit, but you can get uh, in space just above. Mm. Uh, which ah, you have more options. Oh. You might be able to get that in orbit, to be honest. Now that I'm saying that, I'm thinking you can get that in orbit as well. But again, that's another way of exploring that we didn't really explore for lack of a better word last time we played and we are going to be coming back down in the water shall I see if I can push us forward a bit to why not right let's see where am I going to need to burn I'm going to need to burn to the 90 degree angle and then twist it a bit towards the northern line what you on the tube now wrong city Geordie space program not Cockney space program so if I burn sort of 45 degree angle. Yeah, just burn towards the green stuff. That'll do. Oh, and there we go. Now, of course, bearing in mind that we're going to have to overshoot this by uh, a margin. That should be good. And then I, think, once we're I think it might be a bit more than that, mind. I think we're going to start coming back into the atmosphere fairly sharpish. We'll see. We I'm going to... Shoot there. It'll be an interesting experiment because it's not something I've really practiced that much with. And it's good practice for when we're trying to land close to the space uh, the space center as well. I think, I think in order in order to land near the space center, I think uh, the the easiest way to do it is to be in an orbit and then burn it hard and fast so that you end up coming in like a dart <laughs> straight down. Well, that's certainly one school of thought. Um, I'll leave the engines on for now because we might try and make a little corrective burn to make sure we can. Uh, Land or land. Uh, zip it forward a little bit, perhaps? Yeah, why not? See if we can catch we'll, quite we'll a re entry. Re entry should hit about 50,000, maybe a bit less, do you think? Uh, yeah, I think um, usually it's, about, it's around 40 odd thousand. Well, I mean, we've re entered now, but the atmosphere is very thin, so when we hit here, we should uh, start yeah. getting a bit of atmospheric burn. About try 40 down to about 20, you can usually see it. Oh, I think you were right uh, in terms of the initial thing. I think I might overshoot a bit as a result of this. We'll see. We'll slow down very quickly once we'll properly get caught up in the atmosphere. But we're almost above the land mass now, so I want to try and do a, a reverse burn to try and cancel out that velocity. Ah, you're caught. You're captured. I'm caught. Okay, I'm going to do a reverse burn as best I can now. You'll be fine, man. Look. Look how quickly it comes down. There we are. And then that'll just get shorter from there. Probably going to come down fairly close to the coast. Yep. Yep, a nice landing. Um, well, I need to ditch this bit, but uh, I'd rather we were upright when <laughs> I drop the bottom end off our craft. I uh, don't drop your bottom end off and that'll crush your own head. So I have to wait for the atmospheric uh, pressures to ease so I can actually manoeuvre the vessel a bit better. Be alright if we can even get it just to its side slightly. I don't know, okay. we're at 12,000 feet. I'm starting to panic. Sod it, just do it and then it'll fling off anyway. We'll be fine. What I'll do is I'll set the parachute off. 
and that'll help us spin around. Oh, that's quite clever. Oh, might, might get torn off here. Yeah, all the way. No, it won't. Nice. See. Sorry, if that lands on your village. Get the legs out. Nice. Sorry, I'm, I'm stealing lines. your catchphrase. <laughs> it's the one bit that I, I've got that I, I do well here, mostly well, and you've nicked it. Well, that's uh, all plain sailing. See if we can keep an eye on that until we uh, see it explode if possible. Well, it's 350 kilometres down, so... Metres, metres. Metres, sorry. It's speeding up rapidly and we're only a thousand metres from the ground, so it should hit it when we're at about... There now. we are. Nice. <laughs> it's pretty well timed. Cool. So I'm hoping that, obviously, I know that we've got quite a um, loyal little following to um, Jolie Space Programme, so remember guys, show your love. Yes, and I hope you'll bear with us when we start again. Uh, we will be hitting it pretty fast, really, now that we've I got this initial bit out the we'll way. We'll probably get caught up to a similar kind of level to where we were fairly quick if you see how much we're... Why are you standing here, tiptoes? Brought the legs in. No need. There we are. Um, I'll get out and take an EVA report and a surface sample while we're here. Cool. Might as well get the science since we are here already. Do you want to um, just drop a flag as well? Commemoration for our first uh, suborbital. Oh, I don't like too many flags getting in the way. To be we'll, honest, we'll get rid I'll, of them. I'll we'll get rid it. of them at some point. But um, you know, we haven't uh, got anything to worry about for the um, time being. And we haven't actually uh, shown off the new flag now. Exactly. Look at it backwards. Turn around. Oh, uh, landing site one. Because I'm so original. Yeah. Uh, uh, I can't think of anything that better was right incredibly, now. incredibly witty. Oh, there we go. Look at that, man. we got the Gonzo Ewok flag. Uh, which one's that? Is that is that one the Gonzo? Is that one the Ewok? Clearly it is. With the uh, the enchanted hookah pipe. Really, we should give a backstory to the hookah pipe. Should we? Aye. It's kind of, it's the third character, effectively, is what's going on there. So if we ever decide to bring somebody else in on our channel, we've got 11.4 for that. Um, then they can take the, the name Hooker. Yeah. <laughs> but would would not spell it like Hooker as in prostitute. We'd spell it like as in Hooker as in Hooker pipe. I mean, the sound the same, but we would know there was a difference. 58.3 science. It takes us up to 99 science. I think we'll buy some stuff with it and then we'll call it a day on this science farming. Aye. But we've still got plenty of science farming to do, but we're in the stage now where we can do it a little bit more interesting, do Aye. some more interesting stuff. Maybe by the end of uh, next episode we'll be orbital. We'll see what happens, or at least certainly visiting a few more biomes. We're getting the kit to do it now. Um, or should we go for general construction? That gives us the strut connectors. Yep. And it gives handy. us the tri stack coupler, which yep. is handy. 45, we've got room for one more, which is either going to be flight control. Uh, that can be handy. It gives us access to drones from the Stay Putnik, a reaction wheel, and the Mark 1 cockpit. And mm -hmm. it, it starts our road towards uh, planes. Aye. Uh, or we've got general rocketry which gives us a nice big fuel tank and uh, the side mounted radial engines. I never really use them but bigger fuel tanks are always a must. I think under the old regime we would probably have went for the larger fuel tank because we're pushing for the moon. Um, I think this time we should take the flight controls. Fair enough. I think that's the way we should play it because we're going to be doing a lot more sort of near science before we start looking at trying to push out towards the moon. Mm. Or certainly land on the moon. We might go out there and do like a flyby of it before we go and touch down. Um, just to kind of scope out the water. Do it a little bit more methodically. Um, but yeah, I definitely think flight controls are going to be handy. Maybe even seeing if we can send like a drone across to do like a flyby of the moon and come back then. Collect some science when it's there. Something like that, you know, more... Kind of like what you'd expect to see happen in like a, a real situation. You don't just bung astronauts up there, send something unmanned and, and check it out first. Unmanned. Unmanned. Possibly. Possibly. It's all up in the air. Well, I like the idea of risking somebody's life. Well, I've been trying for three weeks for it to sit down and discuss this and it never happens. <laughs> so we're just kind of, again, making it up as we go along, but hopefully in a bit more of an organised fashion this Absolutely. time. Well, that's it for episode one of uh, the new series of Jolly Space Program. It is Geordie indeed. Space Hope you've enjoyed generation. it. More to come. Uh, you'll be seeing some buttons come up on your screen uh, where you can visit our YouTube channel or you can subscribe to our YouTube channel if you'd be yeah. so kind and you'd like to see more. We do have other videos up. We've got other series that we've ran through, other series that are still ongoing. Yep. And please take a look at the messages that aren't to follow.
Thank you very much. Bye-bye.